What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 59 and we start today's episode off once again uh, doing some transfer deals here of course. Uh, in the last episode you saw us pick up Alex McCarthy, the goalkeeper, uh, to replace McGregor and we also are still looking for a holding midfielder that will probably be better than Jao Vitor. Um, as things stand we've offered loads and loads and loads of deals However, all the clubs have rejected them, which is not a real surprise because um, the deals have been basically, you know, zero pounds or a few hundred thousand pounds plus Jao Vitor, and it's not really enough for the clubs to say, yes, we'll accept that deal, because Jao Vitor is a decent player, however he is, only 72 rated, and um, clubs just don't seem to be interested, really. So with that in mind, it looks increasingly unlikely we're going to be able to pick up a holding midfielder in this window. However, I did decide to request some funds once again. I know I, know I did this a couple of weeks ago um, in-game um, on Boxing Day. However, I decided to request some more funds, and I said, if you give us Five million pounds, I think it was, or four million pounds, okay. Um, I will reach the semi finals of the Europa League, and that is a big, big, big ask, you know, for, for us to reach the semi finals of the Europa League. However, I definitely think we can pick up a good holding midfield with that amount of money. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big ask, but um, with us performing so well in the league, I, I totally think the board will be okay even if we don't reach the semi finals of the Europa League. And uh, they did decide to give us 3.1 million pounds, so. Yeah, it's not as much as I wanted. It's uh, 900,000 short of what I wanted. However, it is still quite a good amount of money. So we now have about four million pounds to work with for the rest of January, and that's pretty good. So we've we've got some money to work with. I'll I'll look to sign a good holding midfielder, and then with the money left over, we'll probably sign a lot of pre-contracts. So um, that's that's the thinking behind that. And um, yeah, reaching the semi-finals of the Europa League. I mean, you know, as soon as I did that, I thought, yeah, we can do that. But then I thought, really, can we? So that's that that could be a bit of a problem for us, you know. I I don't anticipate that even if we didn't get to the Europa League semi-finals, we'd be sacked. Um, mainly because we're performing so well in the league, and they'll probably look at that and say, "Well, you're doing so well, we'll we'll forget about the Europa League." However, you know, it, it can happen. You know, if you fail your objectives, you can indeed get the sack. So. That would be interesting if I get sacked for the first time ever um, on YouTube. But uh, anyway, we took on Forest uh, here in midweek. Uh, of course, uh, fresh after beating Oldham in the FA Cup. We now take on Forest in the Capital One Cup semi-final first leg here uh, at home at the Den. And we took the lead in the 33rd minute. I put out a really strong side. And uh, it had to be Danny Ings who got the goal, of course, in such good form at the moment. And uh, Ings gets the goal in the 33rd minute to make it Millwall 1, Forest 0. So a really good start to us. And in the 72nd minute here, Carrasco intercepts his man. We win a free kick and Danny Ings, quick thinking, takes it quickly. Chips it over the top to Carrasco. Carrasco finds the substitute, Adam Drury, on loan from Man. City, but uh, sadly Darlow makes the save and uh, Carrasco gets to it. Crosses the ball in. Trotter's header is well saved again, and Forrest managed to get the ball away. So still Mill will one Forrest nil. In the 88th minute here, though, Chavez uh, Chavez takes a shot from range. It hits the post, and Carrasco slides in and puts the ball into the empty net. So Mill will two Forrest nil, and that should see us through to Wembley for the Capital One Cup final. We will, of course, um, have the uh, second leg away at Forest uh, in the couple of weeks' time. But to be honest, I I can't see them getting anything in that game, even with you know a weaker side for us, which I'll probably put out, because we dominated that game. They only had one good chance for us. That came at the end, as you saw there. The shot went wide at the post, so McCarthy got a clean sheet on his debut. And yeah, it was a really routine victory. So with that in mind, I can't see Forrest giving us too many problems away in the second leg. And we should be hoping, and we probably should be, really be getting through to the Capital One Cup final at Wembley, which will be really good if we do get there, because of course that will be our first, uh, sorry, our second chance of winning silverware, and uh, we want to make amends for what happened last year when we lost in the FA Cup final to Manchester United. However, uh, after that, we had to look at some transfer deals again. Uh, Derby said we will accept the offer for Will Hughes if you give us 2.5 million plus Chavez. So we up it to 1 million pounds and wait and see what happens there. And also, Lee Catamore, we are still thinking about this. However, I was really frustrated because um, I was thinking about just signing on a pre contract, and I noticed that the decision to the ability to sign on a pre contract was no longer there. Because we'd put in an approach for him, we now couldn't sign him on a pre-contract. So I was like, are you serious? Like, that's that's just ridiculous. Like, we've lost the ability to now sign him on a pre-contract just because we put a bid in. So that was 
that was really, really frustrating. So what I decided to do uh, was offer a loan deal for him, and uh, hopefully that would fix the, uh, the the sort of the, the bug, if you will. It's not a bug, but um, we should still be able to offer him a pre-contract. You know, just because we want to sign him on a transfer doesn't mean that we can't go back and try and sign him on a pre-contract afterwards. But uh, anyway, uh, after that, we decided to offer Forrest uh, 750 grand plus Chavez for Chaloba, because I would definitely like to get the fan of Chaloba in. I know I had him at Norwich, but I didn't use him too much. And uh, also Derby, once again, said no to the deal for Will Hughes, uh, 2.5 million plus Chavez, or the deal is off basically. So we offered 1.25 million, and we'll wait and see what happens there because Will Hughes is only 20 years old. Uh, he has got a big future. He's a very talented young midfielder. Um, however, he's not really like like getting Will Hughes will kind of like defeat the point of getting a new midfielder because the the whole point of getting a new midfielder is that he's a holding midfielder, you know. And I'm sure Will Hughes can sit back a bit, but you know, I want a natural holding midfielder, a proper CDM, a, a, you know, someone that actually breaks down attacks, you know, not someone that could, um, you know, like Jal Vitor is just a CM and nothing else, and that's what Will Hughes will be, he'll just be a CM like Trotter and Larson. we need a proper holding midfielder, so, like, don't get me wrong, uh, a good deal for Will Hughes would be very nice, because he'd be a good midfielder to develop for the future, but... You know, it's <laughs> it just seems kind of pointless, really. But um, we'll wait and see what happens there. But uh, anyway, we take on QPR for the following game here at the Dem. And, uh, of course, we are still yet to lose at home uh, this season. And the first chance came in the second minute. Seb Larson wh uh, whips in a wonderful free kick. Ed and Nilsson's head is well saved by Rob Green. But it comes to junior Stanislas, who's really come into form of late. Um, and he puts the ball into the back of the net. So, so Millwall won, uh, QPR nil. I tried to find Larson as I ran up the pitch to celebrate because his free kick was so good. And uh, as soon as I started to celebrate, I then saw it <laughs> in the corner of my eye. So, uh, uh, yeah, that was a wonderful free kick by Larson. I just I love his free kicks, man. They're so so good, the curl is amazing, and um, they're so accurate as well, it was a wonderful delivery, Ed and Nilsson's header was well saved, but um, as I said, Stanis Lousy, who's played really well of late, gets a good goal there, and it's Millwall 1, QPR 0, but in the 34 minute, QPR give the ball away, uh, last one with another great interception, the ball comes to Ings, back heels it to Kelvin, and that's a great finish into the bottom corner, so the team is just full of confidence at the moment, every time we play at the Den, I'm confident of putting a few goals past the team we face, and uh, that was a wonderful goal, nice little back heel by Ings, uh, after the interception by Larson, and Kelvin's finish found the bottom corner, so 2-0 here. QPR should have made it 2-1 though. Like Remy came through, but he put his shot wide at McCarthy's post, so still 2-0. Uh, on the hour mark though, Liam Trotter, our captain, finds Jalby Tor. He plays a great free ball to Kelvin out wide here. He takes on Traore, beats him with the step over and McGeady spin and shoots. But uh, unfortunately, Robert Green makes the save and it's still 2-0. Good save by the uh, the old goalkeeper. However, from the corner, Larson crosses the ball in towards the head of Fabricio. It's headed up in the air. Stanislas gets onto it, plays the ball out wide to Kelvin. Kelvin down the left hand side, Scoop turns, crosses, finds Liam Trotter and our captain puts the ball into the back of the net. So Millwall 3, QPR nil. 62 minutes on the clock and uh, we were playing so well in this game and McCarthy was looking like he was on his way to having back to back clean sheets. So 3-0 uh, here and in the 72nd minute here we play out from the back once again. Real good passing, Robinson down the left hand side, fake shots past uh, his man, finds Jao Vitor, Vitor finds Danny Ings, Ings finds Trotter, first time ball into Kelvin, Kelvin then gets past the nil herb, a lovely Berbers Spin. Then he shoots, but unfortunately Green makes the save and Stanislas can't turn it in. So that would have been a lovely team goal there. But it did finish Millwall 3, QPR nil. So it's a big win once again. QPR haven't done as well as they did last year, so it wasn't really that much of a surprise. And of course, we are still unbeaten at home. But uh, it was really nice to get an emphatic win. We dominated for the entire game. QPR only had one real chance. That was Remy's um, when he put the ball wide. And I was very pleased to get another win and another clean sheet. So two in a row for McCarthy. Even though he said not have much to do, it's still nice to see him get clean sheets. But uh, anyway, after that, that. Um, Derby said once again 2.5 million plus Chavez for Will Hughes or it's not happening and uh, also Forrest said no to the deal for Nathaniel Chalo. They do not want to let him go whatsoever so we decided to offer 1 million pounds uh, or 1.25 million pounds I should say plus Chavez and we'll wait and see what happens there. <coughs> And also, we had a transfer offer from Watford here for Chavez, funnily enough, the player we're trying to shift on. Uh, the 29-year-old who we brought in in the summer for free um, is wanted at 1.4 million, but we decided to stall it just for the time being because uh, he is, of course, included in quite a few swap deals. And uh, we also went back in uh, for Will Hughes. Derby, once again, said 2.4 million or nothing. So I was like, for goodness sake, man, seriously, just let us have him cheap. Uh, so we offered £2 million plus Chavez, and we'll wait and see what happens there. Or is it one point? Was it 2 million? I'm pretty sure it was 2 million. Was it? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? Was it 2 million? 
No, it wasn't two million. What did I do then? I, I've already forgotten what I've done here. Oh yeah, uh, Chavez. Yes, we counter offered to two million pounds for Watford. Now this was interesting as well because I said uh, this is why I started there. I, I couldn't remember what I did. Chavez, despite, uh, despite stalling, I realised that we could still counter offer Chavez and still uh, have the time to offer a new deal for Will Hughes. So what we did was we counter offered. That's why I couldn't. I couldn't remember. Uh, we counter offered two million pound for Chavez and we then offered a one point seven five million pound deal for Will Hughes plus Chavez because I realised we'd still have the time uh, to offer a new deal because of course they would have to match that or reject it so there was still time for us to still put in a bid for Will Hughes um, so we didn't have to make a decision on Chavez then and then uh, we, we would still have time and uh, straight after that uh, Jay <laughs> completely forgot about that I, I realised that was a smart thing I did and I forgot all about it I should have talked up how good that was but uh, anyway uh, we offered a pre-contract to Jay Rodriguez because he's out of contract in the summer and also Watford matched a £2 million deal for Chavez so what a deal that could be and straight after that, um, Derby then accepted a £1.75 million plus Chavez swap deal. So, you know, a good piece of business there, a good piece of thinking by me. But uh, we offer Will Hughes a contract. We don't think it's going to happen. And also, Jay Rodriguez accepts the pre-contract. But uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like because that's much appreciated. And it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.